Varos in Hungary, the scene of the opening round of the Formula One World Powerboat Championship in 1994. The race course itself sighted on the broad stretches of the River Danube. This is the scene of the debut of the Danny Bertels powerboat racing team into the world of Formula One. Three times Formula Three world champion has moved up into Formula One with a Burgess hull and a two-litre fuel-injected Mercury engine providing his power for the season. The world's top drivers are here, the defending world champion, Italian Guido Capolini, former world champion, Fabrizio Bocca, and three times world champion, Welshman Jonathan Jones. All aware that Bertels brings a new threat to the world championship title for 1994. The team itself has spent a long winter preparing hard for this outright competition for the title of world champion. Danny knows his first season will not be an easy one. Some of his fellow competitors have almost 15 years experience in this class and they will take a lot of beating. He's fast in testing but realistic about his possibilities. I'm happy. I'm very happy about the bird. I'm happy about the engine. I'm not very happy about myself. I don't really feel comfortable. It's new. I thought it was going to give me less problems to make the step over from Formal 3 to Formal 1. But I feel like, uh, I don't really know how to say it, but I feel like I'm really a newcomer. Bertels uses this opening round of the championship to find his place amongst his fellow competitors. A tough battle is going on for the defense of the championship title and he knows he must earn the respect of his fellow Formula One drivers. There is only one way to do that, and that's to prove his outright competitive ability. The Formula One championship moves to Sardinia. Strong winds provide difficult racing conditions, and Danny discusses the balance of his boat with Mark, Glenn and Nico, his team that support him all year long. Glenn knows, as team coordinator, Danny has a great responsibility in the World Championship in 1994. He must prove himself, and he responds here with an eighth place on the grid in qualification. The team are still learning, and the battle at the front of the pack is intense. Danny Bertels has to be content with a mid-pack position at this second round of the championship. Nico has been brought into the team for his specialist knowledge on the two-litre fuel-injected Mercury engine, and he works closely with team manager Glenn. Next, it's to the French Grand Prix in chalon sur saone Considerable testing has taken place, and Mark sits on the quayside with his timing board, ready for Danny to put in a qualification time. Huge crowds come to this venue every year. And with fourth place on the grid, everyone expects Danny to do well here on the River Sone. He parades along with the other Formula One drivers in front of an enormous crowd of some 100,000 people. It's a special day, and he senses he can do well here. Away from the start pontoon, and the Belgian Danny Bertels proves that he has the speed ahead of the defending world champion, Italian Guido Capellini. He moves up into third place, and then a small technical failure takes him out of the event. It's a desperately disappointing time. The next event is the British Grand Prix at Cardiff. Danny, along with Glenn, Nico, Sui and Mark, head for the Welsh capital. This is one of the toughest races of the season, and Danny shows that he has all the makings of a world champion when he snatches second place at this Grand Prix. It's a great day and one to celebrate as the team parade in front of the crowds. Back on the quayside, Danny expresses his great happiness at this successful outcome halfway through the season. It's a major success for the team and sets the scene for the Valvoline Mini Flat team for the rest of the year. I'm happy. It goes well. I tried as hard as I could. Uh, it's my first race I finished in Formula 1. To finish second, I'm very happy. I try to do better even next time. In Italy, Bertels will take a seventh place. Then the teams move to Southeast Asia, and a fifth place comes in Malaysia. A seventh place at the Thai Grand Prix, and the team knows it has reliability and consistency, setting the scene for the 1995 championship. In the pits, Danny takes time to talk to the American world champion, Bill Siebel, here to race a special Grand Prix weekend. 
Taking every opportunity to learn, he goes out on the course and challenges the American heavily. The team prepare for the final battle of the year in Abu Dhabi, and then, of course, for next year's championship title in 1995.